Fourth marking period. Exterminators. The PTA has started a petition to get rid of the Hornet as our school mascot. It was the cheer team that got to them. They heard it at the last basketball game. We are the Hornets, the horny, horny Hornets. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are, so we tell them we are the Hornets, the horny, horny Hornets, and on and on. The wiggles and shakes that accompany the cheer freaked out the Meriwether Parent Teacher Association, freaked out PTAs all over the city when the horny hornet cheer was televised. The TV sports guy thought the song was cute, so he did a segment showing the hornet hustle with cheerleaders shaking their stingers and the crowd bumping and grinding with their horny hornet heinies. The student council started a counter petition. The Honor Society wrote it. It describes the psychological harm we have all suffered from this year's lack of identity. It pleads for consistency, consistency, stability. It's pretty good. We, the students of Meriwether High, have become proud of our hornet selves. We are tenacious, stinging, clever. We are a hive of community of students. Don't take away our hornet dumb. We are hornets. It won't be a real issue until the football starts up again. Our baseball team always stinks. The wet season. Spring is on the way. The winter rats, rusty brown $700 cars that everyone with sense drives from November until April are rolling back into storage. The snow is melting for good and the pretty baby shiny cars glitter in the senior parking lot. I'll pause there. Uh, what she's talking about is um, in New York, uh, they have, you know how we have winter clothes? Well, they have winter clothes, but they also have like a winter vehicle. And uh, my understanding is, I'm not 100% sure on this, but from what I understand is they, they drive these beater, beat up cars um, because the salt on the roads ruins them, the salt on the roads, and also, um, it, you know, in case there's a collision from the ice or whatever, it's not too big of a loss. So they put their nice cars in, in the in storage, and then they take them out in spring and summer and so on. So that's what they're doing here. We'll pick it up next paragraph. There are signs of spring. Front lawns, cough up, snow shove, cough up the shovels and mittens that were gobbled by snowdrifts in January. My mother moved the winter coats up to the attic. Dad's been mumbling about the storm windows, but hasn't taken them down. From the bus, I saw a farmer walking in his field, waiting for the mud to tell him when to plant. April Fool's Day is when most seniors get their acceptance or rejection letters from college. Thumbs up or thumbs down? It's a sick piece of timing. Tensions are running high. Kids drink pink, pink stomach medicine from the bottle. David Petrakis, my lab partner, is writing a database program to track who got in where. He wants to analyze which advanced placement classes the seniors took, their standard test scores, extracurricular, and GPAs to figure out what he needs to do to get into Harvard. I've been going to most of my classes. Good girl, Melly. Roll over, Melly. Sit, Melly. No one has patted me on the head, though. I passed an algebra test, passed an English test, I passed a biology test. Well, hallelujah, it's also profoundly stupid. Maybe this is why kids join clubs, to give them something to think about during class. Andy Beast joined the International Club. I hadn't figured him for the deep interest in Greek cooking or French museums. He has abandoned the Martha table and hangs around and onto Rachel Rochelle and Greta Ingrid and all the other resident aliens. Rachel Rochelle flutters her purple eyelashes at him like he's some kind of uber dude. You'd think she'd have more sense. Easter came and went without much notice. I think it caught my mother by surprise. She doesn't like Easter because the date keeps shifting, and it's not a big shopping holiday. When I was a kid, my mom used to hide colored eggs for me all over the house. The last egg was inside a big basket of chocolate rabbits and yellow marshmallow chicks. Before my grandparents died, they would take me to church, and I would wear a stiff dress with itchy lace. This year, we celebrated by eating lamb chops. I made hard-boiled eggs for lunch and drew little faces on them with a black pen. Dad complained how much yard work has to be done. Mom didn't say much. I said less. In heaven, my grandparents frowned. 
I sort of wish we had gone to church. Some of the Easter songs are pretty. Spring break. It is the last day of spring break. My house is shrinking and I feel like Alice in Wonderland, afraid that my head might burst through the roof. I head for the mall. I have 10 bucks in my pocket. What to spend it on? French fries, $10 worth of French fries, ultimate fantasy. If Alice in Wonderland were written today, I bet she'd have a supersized order of fries that said, eat me instead of a small cake. On the other hand, we're rushing towards summer, which means shorts and a t-shirt, and maybe even a bathing suit now and then. I walk past the deep fat fryers. Now that spring has passed, the fall fashions are in the store windows. I keep waiting for the year when the fashions catch up to the seasons. A couple of stores have performance artists hanging out in the front door. One guy keeps flying a stupid loop-de-loop -loop airplane. The plastic-faced woman keeps tying and retying a shawl. No, now it's a skirt, now it's a halter top, now it's a headscarf. People avoid looking at her as if they aren't sure if they should applaud or tip her. I feel bad for her. I wonder what her grades were in high school. I want to give her a tip, only it would be rude to ask if she has change for a 10. I ride the escalator down to the central fountain, where today's entertainment is face painting. The line is long and loud, six-year-olds and their mothers. A little girl walks past me. She's a tiger. She's crying about ice cream, and she wipes her tears. Her tiger paint smears, and her mom yells at her. What a zoo. I turn. Ivy sitting on the edge of the fountain, a giant sketchbook balanced on her knees. She nods toward the line of whiners and face painters, furiously coloring striped spots and whiskers. I feel bad for them, I say. What are you drawing? Ivy moves so I can sit next to her, sorry, and hands me a sketchbook. She's drawing the kids' faces. Half of each face is plain and sad. The other half is plastered with thick clown makeup that is fake happy. She, has painted, she hasn't painted any tigers or leopards. The last time I was here... Please disregard that bell. We will be released by intercom when this class is over. Sorry. I don't know why. They're, we're uh, got, the, uh, got a lot going on here today. Sorry about that. Keep reading. The last time I was here, they were doing clown faces. No such luck today, Ivy explains. Looks good, though, I say. It's kind of spooky, not creepy, but unexpected. I hand back the sketchbook. Ivy pokes her pencil into her bun. Good, that's what I'm trying for. The turkey bone thing you did was creepy too. Creepy in a good way, good creepy. It's been months and I'm still thinking about it. What was I supposed to say now? I bite my lip and then release it. I put a roll of lifesavers from my pocket. Want a piece? She takes one, I take three, and we suck in silence for a moment. How's the tree coming? I groan. Stinks. It was a mistake to sign up for art. I just couldn't see myself taking wood shop. You're better than you think you are, Ivy says. And she opens to an empty page in her sketchbook. I don't know why you keep using a linoleum block. If I were you, I'd just let it out. Draw. Here, try a tree. We sit there, trading pencils. I draw a trunk. Ivy adds a branch. I extend the branch, but it's too long and spindly. I start to erase it, but Ivy stops me. It's fine the way it is. It just needs some leaves. Layer the leaves and make them slightly different in sizes, and it'll look great. You have a great start there. She's right. Genetics. The last unit of the year is genetics. It's impossible to listen to Miss Keen. Her voice sounds like a cold engine that won't turn over. The lecture starts with some priest named Greg who studied vegetables and ends up with an argument about blue eyes. I think I missed something. How did we leap from veggies to eye color? I'll copy David's notes. I flip ahead in the textbook. There's an interesting chapter about acid rain, nothing about sex. We aren't scheduled to learn about that until 11th grade. David draws a chart in his notebook. I snap my pencil point and walk to the room to sharpen it. I figure the walk will do me good. Miss Keene sputters on. We get half of our genes from our mother, half from our father. I thought my genes came from efforts. Ha ha, biology joke. Mom says I take after dad's side of the family. They're mostly cops and insurance salesmen who bet on football games and smoke disgusting cigars. Dad say is, says I take after mom's side of the family. They're farmers, 
who grow rocks on poison ivy. They don't say much, visit Dennis or read. When I was a little kid, I used to pretend I was a princess who'd been adopted when my kingdom was overrun by bad guys. Any day my real parents, Mr. and Mrs. Queen, would send me a royal limo to pick me up. I just had a seven-year-old heart attack when my dad took a limo to the airport for the first time. I thought they had really come to take me away and I didn't want to go. Dad took taxis after that. I look out the window, no limos, no chariots, no carriages. Now, when I really want to leave, no one will give me a ride. I sketch a willow tree drooping into the water. I won't show it to Mr. Freeman. This one's just from my closet. I've been taping some of my drawings to the walls. Any more classes as boring as this one, and I'll be ready to move back in there full time. My leaves are good, natural. The trick is to make them different sizes and then crowd them all on top of one another. Ivy was right. Miss Keene writes, dominant recessive on the board. I look at David's notes. He's drawing a family tree. David got his hair gene from his dad and his eye gene from his mom. I draw a family tree, a family stump. There aren't many of us. I can barely remember their names. Uncle Jim, Uncle Thomas, Aunt Mary, Aunt Kathy. Here's another aunt. She is very recessive. She recessed herself all the way to Peru. I think I have her eyes. I got my I don't want to know about it gene from my dad and my I'll think about it tomorrow gene from my mom. Miss Keene says we'll have a quiz the next day. I wish I'd paid attention during class. I wish I were adopted. I wish David would quit sighing when I asked to copy his notes. The mo 10 more lies they tell you in high school. Number one, you'll use algebra in your adult lives. Number two, driving school is a privilege that can be taken away. Students must stay on the campus for lunch. The new textbooks will arrive any day now. Colleges care about more than your SAT scores. Number six, we are enforcing the dress code. Seven, we will figure out how to turn off the heat soon. Eight, our bus drivers are highly trained professionals. Nine, there is nothing wrong with summer school. We, number 10, we want to hear what you have to say. My life as a spy. Rachel Rochelle has lost her mind. She's flipped. She went to the movies with Andy Beast and her exchange friends. And now she follows after him, panting like a Bashan Freezy. I bet she, she, I don't even know what that is. She wears her buddy Ingrid draped around his neck like a white scarf. When he spits, I bet Rachel Rochelle catches it in a cup and saves it. Rachel Rochelle and some other twit natter on about the movie date before Mr. Stepman starts class. I want to puke. Rachel Rochelle's just Andy this and Andy that. Could she be more obvious? I close my ears to her stupid asthmatic laugh and work on my homework that was due yesterday. It is usually easy to do homework in class before Mr. Stepman's voice creates a gentle white noise sound barrier. I can't do it today. I can't escape the arguments circling in my head. Why worry about Rachel Rochelle? He'll hurt her. Has she done a single decent thing for me this whole year? She was my best friend through middle school. Accounts for something. No, she's a witch and a traitor. She didn't see what happened. Let her lust after the beast. I hope he breaks her heart. But what if he breaks something else? When class is over, I slide into the middle of the pack, pushing out the door before Mr. Stepman can bust me for homework. Rachel Rochelle shoves past me to where Greta Ingrid and a short kid from Belgium are waiting. I tail them, always keeping two bodies between us like detectives on a television. They're on their way to the foreign language wing. That's no surprise. The foreign kids are always there, like they need to breathe air scented with their native language a couple of times a day or they'll choke to death on too much American. Andy Beast swoops over their head and folds his wings and sets himself between the girls as they start up the stairs. He tries to kiss Greta Ingrid's cheek, but she turns away. He kisses Rochelle, Rachel Rochelle's cheek, 
and she giggles. He does not kiss the cheek of the short Belgian. The Belgian and the Swede wave chow at the office of foreign language department. Rumor has it there's an espresso maker in there. The friendly moment, momentum keeps Rachel Rochelle and Andy walking all the way to the end of the hall. I face a corner and pretend to study algebra. I figure that's enough to make me unrecognizable. They sit on the floor, Rachel Rochelle in full lotus. Andy steals Rachel Rochelle's notebook. She whines like a baby and throws herself across the lap to get it back. I shiver with goosebumps. He tosses the notebook from one hand to the other, always keeping it just out of her reach. And then he says something to her. I can't hear it. The hall sounds like a packed football stadium. His lips move poison and she smiles. And then she kisses him wet. Not a Girl Scout kiss. She gives her, he gives her the notebook. His lips move. Lava spills out of my ears. She is not any part of the pretend Rochelle chick. I can only see third grade Rachel, who liked barbecue potato chips and who braided pink embroidery into thread into my hair that I wore for months until my mom made me cut it out. I rest my forehead against the prickly stucco. Greta Ingrid. Oh, whoops. Thin atmosphere. The best place to figure out this is my closet, my throne room, my foster home. I want a shower. Maybe I should tell Greta Ingrid. My Swedish isn't good enough. I could talk to Rachel. Yeah, right. I could say, I've heard bad things about Andy. It would only make him more attractive. I could maybe tell her what happened, as if she'd listen. Well, what if she told Andy? What would he do? This isn't much, there isn't much room for pacing. I take two steps, turn, two steps back. I bang my shin Third against the chair. Third is now over. Please head to your second hour class. Thank you. Stupid room. What a dumb idea, sitting in a closet like this. I flop in my chair and it whooshes out old janitor smells. Feet, beef jerky, shirts left in the washer too long. The turkey bone sculpture gives off a faint rotting odor. Three baby food jars of potpourri don't make a dent in the stink. Maybe there's a dead rat decomposing in the wall, right near the hot air vent. Maya Angelou watches me, two fingers on the side of her face. It's an intelligent pose. Maya wants me to tell Rachel. I take off my sweatshirt. A t-shirt sticks to me. They still have the heat running full blast, even though it's warm enough to crack open windows. That's when I need a window. As much as I complain about the winter, cold air is easier to breathe. Slipping like silver mercury down my lungs and out again. April is humid with slush evaporating or rain drizzling, a warm, moldy washcloth of a month. The edges of my pictures curl in the damp. There's been some progress in this whole tree project, I guess. Like Picasso, I've gone through different phases. There's the confused period where I wasn't sure what the assignment really was, the spaz period where I couldn't draw a tree to save my life, the dead period where all my trees looked like they'd been through a forest fire or a blight. I'm getting better. Don't know what to call this phase yet. All these drawings make the closet seem smaller. Maybe I should bribe a janitor to haul all this stuff to my house, make my bedroom more like this, more like home. Maya taps me on the shoulder. I'm not listening. I know, I know. I don't want to hear it. I need to do something about Rachel, something for her. Maya tells me without any, saying anything. I stall. Rachel will hate me. She already hates me. She won't listen, but I have to try. I groan and rip out a piece of notebook paper. I write her a note, a left-handed note, so she won't know it's from me. Andy Evans will use you. He's not what he pretends to be. I heard he attacked a ninth grader. Be very, very careful. A friend. P.S. Tell Greta Ingrid, too. I didn't want this Swedish supermodel on my conscience, either. What's up? Okay, guys, I'm going to pause right here on page 152. And we'll pick it up.